This is One on One. Brought to you by the New Jersey Education Association. We're going to flip things around a little bit. You like that, John? Uh, at the NJA convention, 2015 NJA convention in Atlantic City. We're here with John Bergman, teacher, author, and flipped learning pioneers. Fifth or sixth book? Oh, we've written six books. Steve. All right, sixth book. This uh, book is called Flip Your Classroom. What is this flip thing about? It's a crazy easy idea. So the students watch the lecture at home. So teachers create a short video they watch at home. And then in class, they do what they used to do at home. You're flipping the homework and the lecture. Why and how did you come up with this? Well, it was a story. We were, we were, our assistant superintendent came down to us one day and she said, my daughter's teacher's recording his lessons like you are, and she loves it because she doesn't have to go to class anymore. And that's when we said, wait a second, what if we rethink what needs to happen in class? And so when we flip this, kids get the help with the hard material in the class with the teacher present. Because right now, kids go home in a traditional classroom and they get stuck on homework. There's no one there to help them. But in a flipped classroom, the teacher's there to help them with the hard stuff. When you were first starting this, John, what was the reaction of educators? They loved it, actually. It was, it was a quick thing. They said, boy, I should have thought of that. It's a simple, simple idea that has profound implications. I'm seeing this work all over the world. I, I leave for Korea next week. I was in Australia last week. It's amazing to see this working in every subject, in every level, in every socioeconomic stratus, it is working. Break it down, the flip classroom in one subject versus another as to how it would work. Now the key question by subject is this, what's the best use of your face-to-face -face class time? A teacher only has so many minutes with their class. So let's say a high school math teacher, they got 52 minutes, whatever it is, with their kids every day. What's the best use of that time? I'm gonna argue it's not you standing up and yakking at your kids. What's wrong it's something with that? Else. Well, the kids I call lecturing, you call it yakking. The problem with that is that some kids can't process at the pace the teacher's at. Some kid is here, they're lower, they can't get it. They, they were lost yesterday and they're lost today. And some kids are bored. So every teacher has to teach to the middle if they're doing the lecture. But if they can watch this short video, they can consume it at their own pace, the one that they're ready for. Is it better in language arts versus math, one subject versus another? No, it works in all the subjects. I mean, we've just finished five books. Flip the science classroom, flip the math, the English, the social studies, each a separate book, and the elementary classroom. It's working in all subjects at all grade levels. So when you go to another country, right, describe the kind of reaction you've gotten in different countries and whether you face any resistance. Essentially, we're seeing it the same in all the countries, yes. I mean, what it looks like in Korea than it looks like in the United States actually looks a lot the same. Teachers and kids are kind of the same everywhere. They, they're going to consume the content, and they need more time, frankly, for active learning. I've, in Asia, it's been interesting to watch. In that culture, there's not a lot of active learning. Let's just say in their educational system. Kids are sitting and listening to lectures, even like in the third grade level. But when they, I walked into the flipped classrooms, the kids are actively doing stuff because the lower level content, that's, got, that's out of the way with these videos. Talk about the, the impact it has on students in terms of what they actually take away and as you perceive it or what the, um, the evidence is, the data is, in terms of how much they actually quote unquote learn. So a, a big study is about to come out of the UK, like a big meta study, they got like a million dollars to run the study with 18 schools and they're showing about a 7% increase in test scores. This is a school system that has like 62 languages spoken, low socioeconomics, and it's working. And we've got a lot of data similar to that here in the United States and actually in Asia and in, in uh, Norway and whatnot that's showing increase in student achievement. But we also have some data that says that teachers are happier because, um, well, because kids are learning, frankly. And uh, kids are also saying they like it better because, here's a quote I heard from a kid, it's finally somebody's teaching the way I learn, right? We're teaching the YouTube generation, like it or not. They've all got one of these stuck in their... How does, that, how does that change teaching? Well, we need to spend less time with information dissemination and more time having them actively do stuff with the learning. And Flipped gives teachers a way to have more active things. So, for example, for me as a high school science teacher, I was able to do 50% more experiments with my kids because of the flipped classroom. And my test scores went up one standard deviation. I mean, much more hands-on activities. You've been teaching science for how long? 24 years. You flipped your approach when? 2006, 2007, we flipped. So after 19 years of teaching, that's when I, I and Aaron Sams, uh, the teacher next door, um, came up with this idea of the flipped classroom. 
finally, at a convention like this, the NJA 2015 convention, what kind of reaction are you getting here? Enthusiastic. The NJEA teachers are like, many of them haven't heard of it, and they're like, what is this? And it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> my sessions got bigger and bigger. It's just like, you gotta hear John, I think. <laughs> um, but just, they're enthusiastic, interested, curious, wanting to know more. Uh, there's still, I think, a need. Like, uh, at the convention, I've been really talking about why you should flip and not how. There's just not enough time to do the how. There's details, and I think they, that's the next stage for a lot of the NJE teachers is let's get the how. Methodology. The methodology, and that's where I like to do workshops around the world. It takes like a day, two days. These are the kinds of things that, that you know, that you have to learn how to do it. And if folks want to find out more, finally? Yeah, go to my website, flippedclass.com. You can learn a lot of tools. Books are there, so I encourage you to go there. Thanks, John. Yeah, great meeting you, Steve. My husband and I spent more than 30 years in the public schools. We're retired, but we like to stay involved. Do you think he's going to learn to fly? We're just as busy now as in our teaching days. The same goes for a lot of the retired educators we know. Let me see you all flap your wings like your penguins learning to fly. Teaching is all about building relationships, and that never goes away. Because once a teacher, always a teacher. We're Ed and Miriam, and we are proud to be New Jersey educators. Also brought to you by the Northward Center, New Jersey Sharing Network, and by NJM.